The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. This can happen to you tonight. You're listening to this program when... Yes? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on? Why, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? Yes, this is your FBI, just starting. Do you know who sponsors that program? Sure I do. It's my good friends, the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Just last Wednesday, my equitable representative was telling me about their life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. So naturally, I know that this is your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. And in just 15 minutes... I'll give all you people who are on the way up full information about the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight's FBI file, The Unfortunate Daughter. prides itself on the fact that one of the things which has helped to make the Bureau an internationally famous crime-solving agency is that it has made a study of the criminal mind. One of the results of that study has been the realization that in the case of most criminals, they commit every crime according to the same pattern, time after time. That knowledge has helped your FBI in many of its most complex cases. But occasionally, a criminal appears who is more difficult to catch, who varies not only his pattern, but his crime. He does not fall into the obvious trap. He uses his cunning to avoid being caught. And sometimes, his plan works for a while. Tonight's FBI file opens in a small town in one of our southern states. On one of the tree-lined streets of this village, a car is parked. A woman is seated alone behind the wheel. The car motor is idling. Suddenly, from a nearby side street, hurried footsteps are heard. A man appears. He runs swiftly to the car, opens the rear door. Get moving. Where's Charlie? He didn't make it. Move, will you? Head to the highway, then drive north to Richmond. Right. I'm going to stay down on the floor here. Don't drive fast. We don't want nobody stopping us. Okay. What happened? We uh, blew everything. Didn't you even get into the bank? Sure. Almost had the dough in our mitts. What went wrong? A local cop was in there. He pumped three slugs into Charlie. Did he get it bad? They were in their head. Oh. I uh, squared it a little, though. I, I got the cop. No help. How does the road look? No trouble. You know, this puts us in a tight box. We ain't holding. No dough at all? Uh, not even enough to bail us out of that roaming house in Richmond. Oh, why? You on the highway yet? A couple of more blocks. Hey, I just thought of something. What? Big Charlie might bail us out. Rose, I told you. He got three slugs in I his... don't mean personally. He's got a tin box he always carried around with him. Must be something of value in it. I never seen it. Back in his room in Richmond. Could be full of cash. All we need is getaway dough. When we get back there, we'll tap it out. Coming. This should do it now. There. Well, I don't see any mountain of green stuff. No, let's hear some of these papers. Dump the whole thing on here. Okay. 
Still no cash, Ruthie. No, I'll look in some of these envelopes. Oh, look here. Huh? A bunch of pictures. Snapshots of a young dame. Look for the money. I don't think you'll find any. Why did Big Charlie carry this box every place? Must have some value. Ruthie, there's nothing but pictures, newspaper clippings. Oh, look at this. A birth certificate. Oh, what do you know? What? This birth certificate. It says... Claudia Pierce, daughter of Charles and Ethel Pierce. Charlie had a daughter. But all these pictures must be of her. I never knew he had a kid. Nobody did. That's yeah, probably why he put this stuff in the box. He wanted to keep it a secret. None of this gets us out of town. That's what we've got to do in a hurry. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Look at this newspaper clipping. Tom, you're wasting time. Look at it, will you? What? It's a picture from the society page of a Boston paper. Ralph Griffin, prominent socialite, and his bride, Claudia Baker. So? Well, look at her picture. Compare it with these snapshots here. Same thing. Sure. That's Charlie's daughter. We must have changed the name from Pierce to Baker. Look, none of this is helping us. Honey, we can hawk Charlie's clothes and get enough for our fare to Boston. This can help us plenty. <laughs> Jim. Oh, hello, Ken. Jim, I've been looking for you. I want to go over that file in the Bartlett case with you. Ken, I'm afraid I haven't got time right now. I've just been out on a job that requires some immediate attention. What is it? An attempted bank robbery down in Vernon. I've just come from there. What's the story? Two armed men entered the First National at approximately 10 o'clock this morning. Oh? They slugged the teller, but before they could get any money, a local policeman came in. Yes? The bandits opened fire on him. He shot it out with him. He killed one of the men. The other one killed him. I see. What happened to the surviving bandit, Jim? He got away. He evidently had a Confederate someplace in town with a car. There's been no trace of him since. Has an alarm been sent out? Yes, but we have only a very vague description on him. I don't think it'll be any help in turning him up. Did you identify the thief who was killed? Yes, his name was Charlie Pierce. Hmm, I seem to remember him. Well, he was an old-timer. He'd been mixed up in a number of bank jobs in the past. Did you uh, pick up anything there that might lead you to this man who got away? Well, nothing too good. Found a card of matches in the dead man's pocket, though. They advertised a bar and grill right here in Richmond. You think maybe Pierce hung out there? Well, there's a slight chance that he did. I'm going over there now and find out. Hey, get a load of this house. Yeah. Yeah, real class. Surprised Charlie didn't put the tap on his daughter himself instead of going around sticking up bank. I know. You know what you're going to say to her? Yeah, just let me handle it. Yes? Uh, I want to see Mrs. Griffin. I'm Mrs. Griffin. Claudia Griffin? That's right. That's swell. We'd, we'd like to come in and talk to you. Who are you? Friends of Charlie. What? Yeah, Charlie Pierce, your father. Uh, can we come in? Yes. Good. Go ahead, Lucy. All right. Anybody home here? No. Uh, uh, what about uh, servants? We have a couple. They're on vacation. Oh, well, that makes it real nice. What is this all about? How did you know who I am? Oh, your pop told us. He said if we ever needed anything, we should look you up. I don't believe you. He, um... Uh... Gave us these old pictures of you. He said that'd be proof enough. Let me see them. Yeah. Now, do you believe us? What do you want? Well, we figured we might sort of move in here for a while. Oh, no. Why not? My husband doesn't know about my father. He's a respectable businessman. Well, so what? We won't tip him off. You can't do this. Honey, you don't have much choice. What? You don't take us in. Then we'll have to tell your husband. Oh. Now, let's sit down and talk this thing over. Ken, that book of matches was a good lead. Really, Jim? Yes, I went to the place that advertised Bill's Bar and Grill. Yes? Showed the bartender a picture of Charlie Pierce. He recognized him immediately. Good. Said he'd been in there quite a good deal in the past three weeks. His constant companions were another man and woman. Evidently his confederates. That's right. The bartender also remembered that Pierce lived in a rooming house right around the corner. Well, that's a break. I went around there and talked to the landlady. 
She told me that another couple had lived there with Pierce, but they had packed and left around noon today. The bank robbery was at 10? That's right. I just about gave him enough time to get back from Vernon. Yes, I know. I got a good description of him from the landlady, though. The man had a scar on his face. From his general physical appearance, he sounds like an ex-convict named Tom Dawson. Anything else, Jim? Well, I found this old snapshot on the floor of the room. It obviously belonged to one of the bandits. What is it? A picture of a girl in a graduation gown. It says, love to daddy, son, Claudia. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get Dawson's picture from the files and take it back and show it to the landlady. <laughs> Look, don't you think you've done enough of that crime? Why did you come here? Why? Tommy, we already told you we needed a hideout. Well, you're not going to stay here. You mean you don't care if your husband knows about you? No. Who are you kidding? I mean it. Honey, he's a respectable guy. This could upset him plenty. I don't care. Hey, the car outside. Huh? The guy getting out. That's my husband. Tom, what do we do? Take it easy. She's going to tell him. No, she ain't. Yes, I am. Claudia! Yes, Ralph? Where are you, dear? I'll be right there. Good evening, dear. Hello, darling. Uh, hey, what's the matter with you? Well, you've uh, been crying. Yes, darling. Why? Ralph, I have something to tell you. Oh, can it wait, honey? I've got something to tell you first. It's the biggest news of the year. But Ralph... Guess who you're talking to right now. I'll give you one guess, honey. Ralph, You're I... talking to the new vice president of the bank. What do you think of that? Oh. They just told me right before I came home. Isn't it wonderful, honey? Oh, yes. I couldn't wait to... Hello. Hello. Uh, aren't we going to meet your husband, honey? Ralph, this is Mr. and Mrs. Dawson. Oh. How do you do? Hello. Hi. The Dawsons know my father. I've asked them to stay a few weeks here with us. Open tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now a special message to men and women who are on the way up. To those of you who are confident that sometime soon you'll be making a telephone call like this. Hello? Hello? Is that you, Beth? Listen, there was a surprise in my pay envelope today. Yes, a raise. A big one. Now you know what I mean by men on the way up. Men who are going to get somewhere or know the reason why. If you're that man, then make sure you have insurance designed to order for you. Right now, investigate the Equitable Society's special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. A plan for people of all ages who expect to be earning more money five years from now. I get it. This plan is elastic so a man can make changes when his ship comes in. Exactly right. And that's just one of several advantages of this Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. First... It gives you and your family needed protection right now. Second, this equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. Third, this equitable plan is flexible at all times. can expand or contract as you see fit. Okay, Mr. Keating. I've got enough faith in my future to want to look into this plan. What do I do first? Just get in touch with your Equitable Society representative. Phone him for full information on the Equitable Plan for People on the Way Up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> and now back to the FBI file... The Unfortunate Daughter. It happens every so often that a decent, honest citizen is called upon to make a choice between some unpleasant publicity and the condoning of a crime. In many cases, the decent citizen becomes a victim of fear and panic, loses his ordinary sense of judgment, and decides to do business with the criminal. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI is an example of just that. 
And it is difficult to say that in the same position, any of us would be inclined to do differently. However, the experience of your FBI has shown that year after year and case after case, the decent citizen who chose to do business with the criminal was hurt because the criminal failed to keep his part of the bargain. Morally, that is wrong. But what the honest law-abiding person forgets is that criminals have no morals. Tonight's file continues at the Richmond field office of the FBI. It's early evening. Special Agent Jim Taylor is talking to his fellow agent, Ken Monroe. Well, what did you get from the landlady, Jim? She definitely identified Dawson as the man who lived at her rooming house with Charlie Pierce. I've got further confirmation for you. Oh, how's that, Ken? One of the local police down in Vernon came in right after you left. He had an employee of the bank with him. Yes. I showed him Dawson's picture. He recognized him as the other bandit. Good. I put out an alarm on him. I know where he's gone. Really? Yes. As soon as I knew who we were looking for, I went to the railroad station, bus line, and airport. Well? The ticket seller at the airport recognized Dawson from his picture. He sold him two tickets to Boston on the one o'clock plane. Let's see. It's after eight now. Yeah, it's too late to contact the Boston airport. He's already gotten there. What's the next move? We'll notify the Boston office. Send out an alarm on Dawson and tell him we're on our way. <laughs> Yes, sir. You have some more coffee? Uh, thanks, I will. Are the Dawson still sleeping? Yes. How about some more toast, dear? No, I have plenty, thanks. Ralph, if you get a chance today, I wish Wait. you... Wait. What? This picture here on the front page. Claudia, look at it. What is it? It's your friend Dawson. What? I'm sure of it. Look. Oh. He's wanted in connection with a bank robbery. He tried to hold up a bank in Richmond yesterday. He and a female companion eluded the police and took a plane here to Boston. I see. Another bandit named Pierce was killed on the job. Oh, no. Honey, we've got to call the police at once. Just stay where you are, mister. Huh? You're not calling any cops. Why didn't you tell me that my father had been killed? I didn't want you to feel bad. <laughs> Claudia, what's this all about? <laughs> Answer me. Well, you want me to tell him? No. No, I'll tell him. Claudia, what is this? The man who was killed, Ralph. The other bank bandit. He was my father. What? That's why these people are here. They wanted to hide out from the police, and they threatened to tell you about my father if I didn't shelter them. Oh, honey, why didn't you tell me? I was going to, Ralph. I'd made up my mind to tell you as soon as you came home. What stopped you? When you told me what had happened at the bank, that you'd been made vice president, I knew then that if the truth about my father came out, you'd be ruined. And she has a good point there, Mr. Griffin. This is awful. It'll be a lot worse if you call the cops. Just uh, think that over. Ken, I just talked to the agent in charge. Any development? No, the police here in Boston have contacted all hotels, tourist camps, rooming houses, and no one answering to Dawson's description has been seen. Well, he must have had some specific reason for coming here. It's probably a hideout. Yes. The local papers have cooperated. Most of them carried his picture on the front page. That might get results. I sure hope so. Oh, excuse me. Special Agent Taylor. Yes. Yes, I see. Well, what was that address again, please? 47 Rand Drive. Thanks a lot, sir. We'll get right out there. It's a break, Ken. What? One of the local agents has been working all morning out at the airport. He finally ran across a cab driver who identified Dawson's picture. Good. His trip record shows that he took them to an address out in the suburbs late yesterday afternoon. You have the address? Yes, let's go. What's the name of the man who lives here again, Jim? Ralph Griffin. Pretty impressive looking house. Mm-hmm. Strange place for someone like Dawson to come to. Yeah, I know. Yes? Is Mr. Griffin here, please? Who wishes to see him? Now, we're special agents of the FBI. Oh. They're my credentials. I see. Are you Mrs. Griffin? Yes. Just a moment. I'll call my husband. 
Ralph? Yes, Claudia? There's some men from the FBI to see you. FBI? Yes, they're at the front door. Looks like that's where we're going to stay, Ken. Yes. Hello? Mr. Griffin? What can I do for you? Well, Mr. Griffin, we're looking for a man named Dawson. We have information that he and a woman came here to your address yesterday afternoon. Dawson? That's right. I'm sorry, I've never heard of him. Would they have come here to see anyone else? I'm afraid not. My wife and I are the only ones here. Our servants are on vacation. Oh. Well, looks like we got a bad lead. Sorry, gentlemen. Oh, thank you anyway, sir. Not at all. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Come on, Ken. You think we should get a warrant and come back here? No, I just remembered something. We got some work to do at the office first. Anything gone? Yes. Nice work, Mr. Griffin. I didn't relish it, believe me. Ralph, I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, it's no one's fault, Claudia. But I'm not putting up with this any longer. What do you mean by that, mister? You and your husband are getting out of here. Are you kidding? No. Regardless of the consequences, you're not spending another night in my house. Look, we're staying as long... Hold it, honey. Hold it. I uh, think we better do like he says. Oh, thank heaven. It ain't for your sake. It's for ours. What do you mean, Tom? The heat is on. Those guys will be back. You think so? Sure. The next time they'll have a warrant. Where do we go? I don't know yet. What will we use for money? That part is easy. How? Mr. Griffin here is in the banking business. What do you mean by that? You're giving us some getaway dough. Oh, no. We need $5,000. We want it this afternoon. You're not getting it from me. Look, I'm letting you off easy. For five grand, you get rid of it. I'm getting rid of you the way I should have, right from the beginning. I'm going to call the FBI and tell them you're here. No, you're not. Keep away from that phone. Get out of my way. Not a chance. Uh. I will talk business again when he comes to. Jim. Oh, yes, Ken. I checked up on Ralph Griffin. Good. He's legitimate, all right. He works for one of the banks here in town. Did you get all the details on his background? Yes, I have them right here. Fine. Oh, uh, anything there about his wedding? Here's a newspaper clipping on it. I got it from the morgue at one of the local papers. May I see it? Sure. Thanks. Ralph Griffin, prominent socialite, and his bride, Claudia Baker. What's this all about, Jim? You remember that graduation picture I found in the rooming house in Richmond? Uh, yes. I brought it along in my briefcase. Yeah, here it is right here. Well? Compare it with this picture, Griffin's bride. Hey, it's the same girl. That's right. Now, let's see if this newspaper article tells us where the bride went to school. Um, there it is, Jim. State College. Yeah. Let's contact them at once and see what they can give us on a background. Should have a good deal of bearing on this case. Try to move, darling. Just lie still. How is he doing? Please get away. Look, we have some business to take care of, remember? Leave him alone. They're coming through? Yeah. Oh, my my head. Just take it easy, darling. Ready to talk yet, Mr. Griffin? What? I'd like to know about that 5000 Oh, you're still here. Naturally. Now, how about that dough? I'm not giving it to you. Maybe you'd like another treat? Yeah. Keep away from him. We ain't got much time. How about it, mister? No. Okay. Wait! Yeah. I'll get you the money. Claudia. I can't let him hit you again. Where is the dough? In that desk. Claudia, come back here. Ralph, I've got to do this. No! Just stay put, mister. Let me go. Take it easy. <laughs> mister, you better do like he says. He'll only get hurt again. Are you coming with that dough? I'm getting it. Oh, Claudia, don't. Don't see what she's doing, Ruth. She's coming back now. Here. Here's your money. Swell. It's a little over 4000 That's all there is. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. We've got something to tend to first. Please go. And have you blow a whistle on us the minute we're out of the door? We ain't that stupid. I promise you we won't. That is worth exactly nothing. Claudia, he has a gun. That's right. I'm using it, too. No, wait! Hey! There we are, Dawson. It's the FBI. That's right. Ken! Ken, are you in there? Yes, yeah, stay put, everyone. Jim, can you open that window? Yeah. Yeah, I can manage. Ken, Ken, get his gun, will you? Yeah. Oh, I'm grateful that you're here, sir. Well, we came back because we checked at your wife's school. We learned there who her father was. That more or less explained everything. I'd say we returned just in time. Both 
For his wanton murder of the bank guard, Tom Dawson was tried and convicted on the charge of first-degree murder. For serving as his accomplice, Dawson's wife, Ruth, was sentenced to serve 20 years in the penitentiary. And thus, two people who had committed bank robbery, murder, and blackmail were stopped from pursuing their criminal careers. Because they changed their crimes and their patterns, they were difficult criminals to catch. But they were caught because your FBI does not discourage easily nor quickly. Once a criminal escaped and remained at large for 16 long years, but your FBI never closed the file on him. And in due time, that criminal, like the ones in tonight's case, learned that so long as law enforcement agencies like your FBI are on the job, crime will forever be an unprofitable occupation. just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. If you're what President Thomas I. Parkinson of the Equitable Society describes as a man with faith in his own future and the future of America, then you'll surely want to learn more about the Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. Exactly how much will this plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How much protection does it give me right now? Your Equitable Representative can work that out in two minutes. Does this plan offer me desirable options? You bet it does. Your equitable man will be glad to give you further facts and figures on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Hentecked Swindler. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Hen Peck Swindler on This Is Your FBI. Here's a reminder. Daylight saving time starts next Sunday in many sections of the country. But regardless of which time zone you live in, this program will continue to be broadcast at the same time by your clock that you heard it today. There is $4,050 in Break the Bank's jackpot. Stay tuned now for radio's biggest money-paying show, Break the Bank. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.